Welcome to In The Lab. This is your host, Coach Jesse Grun. We are here to talk about unconventional modalities. What am I holding in my hand? Are these bowling pins? Are we going to juggle them? We are not. One, it's only two, and two, I can't juggle. Um, but what we're going to be talking about today is unconventional modalities and how you can start to add them to your own strength and conditioning work. So if you notice, I've got some Indian clubs in my hand. We've got a Gata here. We've got a lovely, lovely steel mace. Let's see if she stays upright. On turf, it's a little bit harder, so I'll just stack her on this kettlebell right here, and then we've got a kettlebell right there on the ground. Now, what's interesting about all the modalities that you see here is that they all have some sort of foundation in history or civilizations that are not Western civilization, and they're not from the 21st century. These are all historically used. Kettlebells were used for agriculture when they first started out. Uh, Indian clubs were uh, used to train uh, soldiers. Um, gatas as well as weapons, but we've started incorporating them into Western civilization training to take the elements that we took from those civilizations and their abilities to do things and then apply them to us in training. So there's a lot of wide range of benefits. There's a learning curve with anything here. The reason being is because there's forces to manage here that are more dynamic than you would see with like a dumbbell or barbells and even barbells have a you know olympic lift lifting huge learning curve associated with it so just things to keep in mind so i'm going to go over some of these and then when i get to the steel mace i'll go over my top five favorite steel mace exercises so without further ado let's get into indian clubs so indian clubs these are just two little one pound clubs can help us build that reflexive stability it's brain training in a way so uh, we can use these in dynamic fashions where we're actually getting into rotations and actually exposing the shoulder joint to rotations. We can get into opposing motions. We can get into cross body motions with it. Okay, we can do things like dynamic chops and add them to more of our dynamic locomotion movement. And the anatomy of the Indian club itself then has to make me decelerate. And then that lever that I'm decelerating is further away from me. It's further away from the handle. If you notice, my hand is down here. This is the lightest part of the club. And as I get up to the top, it becomes the heaviest part. So there are a wide range. We tend to see these more in the rehab setting, but they have such a place in every workout setting and every potential strength and conditioning gym should have Indian clubs being used. Check out Greg Cook and Functional Movement Systems. He likes to talk about Dr. Ed Thomas on there quite a bit, who talks extensively about how these can be incorporated into your training and how they will make you just move better, move well, and connect your brain to your body. And those are our Indian clubs. A little bit bigger and kind of a sister in the family, this is a gata. Okay, so think of it like a, a much larger Indian club. There are different sizes and shapes of gatas, but this is going to be a little bit heavier. This is just five pounds, but you notice that it's a little bit more to manage. Now, with this one, I really have to work on the centrifugal force because, again, one of the constants here, handle isn't where the load is. So now the load is further away from my center of gravity. That's going to make anything I do harder to manage and be able to do, which is what some of the benefits of training with these modalities are. A typical exercise now becomes something that I have to work to manage a force as I'm doing it. Kind of looks like a bat, but I tell you what, this doesn't swing like a bat. Um, and so being able to learn how to do things with this, very similar to the Indian club, much larger size, so much greater demand on the tissue and the joints associated with it. Much like the kettlebell itself. Now, when we're talking about the kettlebell, we tend to see it more used in a static motion where you'll, you'll see things like, you know, just a simple kettlebell swing or presses, for instance. But the anatomy of the bell actually lends itself to being moved in a way that's more circular in nature. So I can actually do things with it that are more dynamic. Okay. So the kettlebell itself, which again started as an agricultural tool, allows itself based on anatomy to be a ball that moves. Okay. So something to keep in mind when you're working with a kettlebell, if you've had one for a long time, don't necessarily know how to get into that. If you actually check out Living Fit, our uh, 
parent company for this show actually have um, education in there and programs associated with learning how to move in multiple directions with the kettlebell. So highly, highly encourage it. Now we can really start adding load to the movement. From a management standpoint, it's a little easier because it's a shorter lever. So that load is a little closer to the hand than it is with Indian clubs or the gata. Now let's go in the other extreme. Now let's go to the steel mace. So the steel mace. So this is a 15 pound steel mace. And something to remember is most of the weight is up here. So even though this is a steel stem, it's actually hollow on the inside. So it's very light and most of the weight is up here. Now with the traditional longer uh, gatas and Indian clubs, or not Indian clubs, but maces that you see used in historical times, they are longer and normally wood, and then it's stone or iron at the top. So an even greater force that you have to manage whenever you're doing it. Steel mace is a little different. At least you get a little bit more load into the handle itself. However, most of the load is still down here at the end. So you have to be able to manage that. So love training steel mace. You're constantly trying to manage a force. You're resisting rotation whenever it's on one side and just doing linear sagittal exercises like lunges or squats or presses. However, it lends itself to being rotated and moved. So without further ado, let's go over my top five favorite exercises to do with a steel mace. So number one is the one that we see everybody do with a steel mace, which is a 360. Um, steel mace 360s mean that I'm going to start with the steel mace parallel with my midline, and I'm going to wrap it all the way around my body and bring it back to that parallel position. One of the things to remember with the 360, and one of the things I think most people don't necessarily understand when you're doing this is you got to remember you're the sun and this is a planet. You're not moving because the planet is orbiting you. You are guiding it through its movement, you, through its orbit. This is going to require scapular and shoulder mobility to do it, core stability, because that spine is going to want to go into extension and you actually have to be very strong here, which is the missing element for most people. So, the way I learned how to do this is to kind of choke up and hold it nice and tight and just learn how this feels as you're taking it through the motion. So I start down belly button. I'm going to lift up and tilt it in my direction of travel. For beginners, I like whichever hands on top. That's the direction we're going to travel. And then I'm going to wrap it all the way around and then pull it across my body as like a seat belt to then set it to go again. And as I get better at this, I move my hands down. I switch to the top hand. And then eventually I'm able to just let it swing, engage the core. I'm going to have a little bit of rotation in my hips and my torso. So I'm not static, but I'm not trying to muscle through this. I'm allowing it to move. Okay. Eventually those turn into single arm 360s, which is just like kind of like that Indian club I showed you, but a lot more difficult. So first exercise, 360. Second exercise that's my favorite is the lateral press out. So being able to work in that frontal plane with the steel mace is so, so important. So we want to hold this cross body. So right across, so the steel mace is parallel with the floor, perpendicular with my body. So my power hand, the hand closest to the steel mace head is up. My base hand is down. And what I'm going to do from this position is I'm going to lift up and I'm going to press out, but I'm pushing the steel mace together. Once I'm all the way out, I'm going to pull apart like I'm trying to fire a bow and then I'm going to push it together to bring it back over. To switch it, I want to bring my bottom hand to my top, top hand to my bottom, and then do the same thing on the other side. It really works on stability of that shoulder in that frontal plane. So we're getting into shoulder horizontal abduction, which is weak for most people, and the ability of the posterior capsule of the shoulder to be able to stabilize and support you. So lateral press out. Next is an uppercut, okay? So when we're working the uppercut or um, uh, it, when we put it to a lunge, kind of call it a tactical lunge in some of the schools of thought I've learned, what we want to do is we're now going to start with the steel mace across the body. So, so I want to grab the steel mace head in my right hand, 
but I want the head next to my thigh. So I want to feel like I'm almost about to joust with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to overhand grip the left hand down. And so it's across my body from here. I'm going to pull that hand up. So now I've got steel mace across my body with the, with the steel mace head at the bottom and then drive that arm up and in front of me. Now I've got this awesome push pull mechanic and I'm working through almost that chopping motion, but I'm using the steel mace here. So we're getting into those obliques. We can add rotation to this if we want to. And again, one of my favorite variations is to actually add the lunge. We call that the tactical lunge. So we've got our 360, our lateral press out and our uppercut so far. Next is a lower body activity that I really love to do with it, which is just a switch squat. Now this provides a little bit more dynamic motion to the squat, having to manage the force from one side to the other. So as I'm holding the steel mace cross body with it in my left hand, I squat down as I rise, I immediately switch and I'm following it down. I'm never stopping at the top. So I'm having to manage that force. I can make that a smaller switch, which means that there's more force that I have to handle that I have to maintain as I'm doing that. Okay. So, and then finally our final exercise that I love to do with, uh, with the steel mace, um, is going to be that single leg deadlift. Now you're like, Jesse, you can do a single leg dead with a double L at a kettlebell. You can, but this challenges stability so much greater and I can rotate with it. So I'm going to go cross body right with my palm up and my left hand down. And as I deadlift, I can rotate the steel mace in my body into that hip. And then as I come back up, rotate back into position. Now I can load in an environment that's less stable, the rotational elements of my hip with the steel mace, pulling it apart. I can scale this hand to make it easier or harder as I work through this single leg deadlift here and then up, which is an amazing exercise for learning how to load into that hip and drive forward. Thinking about the way we dynamically move in life, we tend to not move just straight ahead. There's modicum levels of rotation as we do it. So if you haven't tried some of these unconventional, non-traditional modalities, I highly recommend it. As I said, uh, Living Fit actually has a series on the kettlebell. You can learn the basics and then start to learn into the foundations to flow, which gets into our advanced realm. Um, so these are incredible tools that we've pulled from our history that will make you a better functional mover, no matter what your occupation or your sport is.